miniature editions of the New Testament in English are rare, and their survival rate is extremely low. Only six editions of the format known as 24mo were printed before 1633. Robert Young, the King's printer for Scotland, issued the seventh edition. In a 24mo book, each printed sheet is folded to give 24 leaves or 48 pages. Young printed the miniature New Testament in single column without marginal notes. This copy is bound with an edition of the Metrical Psalms published by the Stationers' Company in London in 1635. It has a contemporary binding of rose velvet, now faded and napless, with silver clasps, now tarnished. Its edges are tooled and gilt. This volume is remarkable for the 183 engraved plates added to the text after its publication. The Old Testament is embellished with smaller engravings printed two to a page, while the New Testament has much larger single-page images. In the 1660 Bible, the first 28 engravings depicting scenes from the beginning of Genesis, have captions printed in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Starting with the end of the Noah story, all the captions are printed in English. The 1660 Bible has a beautiful binding of red Morocco in the cottage roof style. Its edges are gilt and its text ruled in red. The volume opens with the Book of Common Prayer published in 1665 and ends with a 1663 edition of the Metrical Psalms. Archbishop William Laud was Chancellor of the University of Oxford between 1630 and 1641. In 1636, he obtained from Charles I a charter allowing the university to print all manner of books, and an additional privilege to publish the King James Bible. The university entered into various agreements with the Stationers Company of London and other printers and received money in exchange for not printing Bibles. The second Oxford edition of the King James text, shown here, appears to be the first English Bible with chronological information added to the marginal notes. The biblical chronology was taken from a treatise compiled by Archbishop James Usher and published between 1650 and 1654. At the time, many scholars, including Isaac Newton and Johannes Kepler, believed that the world was created around the year 4000 BC and assumed it would end 6,000 years later in AD 2000. In his second epistle, Peter writes, with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. If Peter is right, then the six days of creation correspond to 6,000 years. Usher further defined this chronology and determined that creation started at sunset on the day preceding Sunday, October 23, 4004 BC. This impressive folio, larger than any Bible previously published in England, marks the first attempt to provide a study edition of the King James text. After the end of Revelation, it includes two densely printed tables that describe the subject matter of the two testaments in chronological order and explain the system of weights, measures, and coins used in the biblical world. All dates are given in relation to the nativity. Creation is dated to the year 4004 before the common year of Christ and the birth of Jesus 
to the fifth year before the common account called Anno Domini. The engraved title page shown here depicts the interior of a Gothic cathedral with the resurrected Jesus ascending to heaven in the upper register, Moses and Aaron on each side of the title, and the four evangelists and the Last Supper at the bottom of the page. The coat of arms of William III, King of England from 1689 to 1702, is inserted right above the title. This large folio was the first illustrated edition of the King James Bible. It was produced by John Basket, who had begun his career in London in 1712. Oxford University granted Basket a license to print Bibles for 22 years in exchange for a yearly payment of 200 pounds. The Bible he completed in 1717 is by far his most important work. Printed in large type, it includes engravings at the beginning and end of many biblical books. Most of them are signed by artists who worked in England in the first decades of the 18th century. The copy displayed here is extra illustrated with hundreds of thumbnail engravings skillfully pasted into the margin of the text by an unknown owner. The general title page shown here is printed in black and red. It identifies Basket as both King's printer and printer to the university and includes a view of Oxford. To its left, the frontispiece designed by J. Thornhill depicts Moses writing the first words of Genesis. An inscription at the bottom of the frontispiece reads, printed at the Clarendon Printing House. The university's presses had been moved from the theater to the Clarendon House in 1713. Francis Sawyer Paris, master of Sydney Sussex College, since 1746, and university librarian, spent the last decades of his distinguished academic career preparing a new folio edition of the 1611 text. The 1762 folio, published two years after his death, contributed significantly to the creation of a standard text of the King James Bible. Paris tried to bring the translation closer to the original text by checking the textual variants using the appropriate grammatical number, changing the word order, and so on. He also tried to improve the spelling. This magnificent Bible is the masterpiece of John Baskerville, who had been printer to the University of Cambridge since 1758. Throughout his career, Baskerville strove to achieve a perfect balance between type, layout, paper, and ink. He used to discard a quarter of the sheets he printed and was not satisfied until he obtained pages of even color and inking. Not surprisingly, his 1763 Bible cost twice as much as any contemporary folio Bible. Baskerville moved to the bottom of the page all the marginal notes of the original King James Bible. Only the Bible's chronology can be found in the margins of the 1763 folio. The Bible was printed in 1250 copies and part of the press run was sold by subscription. Many of the fonts released by type foundries such as Linotype and Monotype are revivals of Baskerville's typefaces and bear his name. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle paid Baskerville an indirect homage in 1901 when he used his family name 
in one of his most successful novels, The Hound of the Baskervilles. In 1980, Umberto Eco gave Baskerville's name to a character in his most famous novel, The Name of the Rose. The University of Oxford issued its own scholarly text of the King James Bible within years of the new Cambridge edition prepared by Paris. The editor of the Oxford Standard Text was Benjamin Blaney, a scholar who specialized in Hebrew. It appears that Blaney had spent between three and four years working on the new Oxford text and had collated the 1611 folio with the Bible published in 1701 under the direction of Bishop Lloyd and two Cambridge editions of late date, a quarto and an octavo. Blaney's revision resulted in a more consistent use of italics to indicate words added by the translators an expanded list of marginal references, corrections made to the running titles and chapter summaries, and not a few emendations of the text itself. Annotated Bibles became increasingly popular during the late 18th century. While the royal printers and the two universities had the exclusive rights to publish the bare text of the King James Bible, their privileges did not extend to annotated or illustrated editions. In 1778, a little-known publisher named Bellamy started to print an annotated Bible in weekly installments. He had contracted Thomas Scott to write a running commentary on the Bible and was planning to publish the whole work in 100 numbers. Scott was to receive a guinea per number. In the end, the editor issued 174 numbers and did not complete the project until June 1792. Most surviving copies are bound in four volumes. Bellamy commissioned a special set of engravings for this Bible. Scott provided an easy-to-understand commentary that avoided technical issues such as textual criticism and aimed to promote the edification of pious persons. It was a resounding critical success, though not a financial one. Scott's commentary was acclaimed as the greatest theological work of the century and was reprinted three times in England during its first 20 years. It was even more popular in the United States, where it sold 25,000 copies between 1808 and 1819. This Bible was the last work of Thomas Macklin, a print seller and picture dealer. Oxford University Press refused to grant Macklin permission to print the text of the King James Bible but he managed to circumvent their opposition by including a minimal number of footnotes printed in microscopic type way below the text and implying he was publishing a Bible commentary. In most copies, including the one on display, the bottom portion of the printed pages was cut off during the process of binding and the notes have disappeared completely. Macklin's six-volume set is remarkable for its sheer size, its illustrations, and its typography. The text is embellished with 71 plates engraved after original artwork. For the frontispiece of the New Testament, shown here, Macklin commissioned from the noted artist Joshua Reynolds a depiction of the Holy Family and paid him 500 pounds. He spent an estimated 30,000 pounds for the whole Bible. 